First things first, our program tells us what tools are needed in the setup list here. So what I need to do is go to my offsets in my uh, path palette program to make sure that everything listed with the proper T callout tool blank, right, matches the tools here and then also has the right height offset so that I don't run the tool into my table. So we can measure these offset values. For instance, let's go to uh, Superfly T21. Actually, let's do this one quarter inch in mil. That's T11. So I go to offsets, look for T11. It's my quarter inch. It measures uh, 2.84. So let's take a look now at what the actual measurement of that tool is. So here we have our granite block and our tool holder and our tool in there and everything's locked and tightened up so what we do is just go ahead and tap that there and you can see it reads 2.840 so we're good that means this tool is ready and you're going to repeat that process for every tool that you're using uh, in the program so i have the all the tools that i need i have all the heights correctly uh, inputted i got my super fly i got my quarter i got my drill and my uh, countersinks and I've also gone ahead and set up the uh, stock in the vise. And also I just have like a little indexer so I can repeat this uh, over and over again. I don't have to refine zero every time. And we're ready to machine. All right, so the next thing I have to do is tell the machine where G54 is, right? We've programmed it. We've told it that G54 is actually right here at this corner. And uh, I just need to make sure that the machine knows where that's at so that when we run all the tool pads, it doesn't run into anything, um, doesn't break a tool, so on. So I'm gonna use my Heimer 3D. And I've selected the uh, tool 100, which is my Heimer sensor. And uh, it automatically knows, the program knows how tall this is when it's at zero. So if I move Z down, and touch off. I'm going to make this go around twice. Two millimeters of movement. The ball is two millimeters in diameter. Find zero, just like we have there, and then record Z zero in Pathpilot. We'll do the same thing for X and Y. Now we know that G54 is at this back left hand corner. All right, now that we have everything indexed in the machine properly, we're gonna go ahead and give this a, a cycle start. And uh, I'm gonna run this first couple ops without coolant, so that way you can see what's going on. Enjoy. Now Pathpilot is calling for the next tool, T11, which is our one quarter inch end mill. You can also see we get a really nice preview of what everything looks like. So the red we've already completed and then the white is what we have to go. Before I started that, that second op with the quarter inch end mill, I, I wanted to double check something and so I did and I changed a little bit of the program. We'll get to that in the design phase of the how it's made for this bottle opener. but. Um, the problem is now that I've already cut my Superfly and I don't want to have to recut it, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in find G53. Um, that's the start line for each one of the operations. And this one is for the Superfly, and the next one is now for the quarter inch. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select this um, line here, and I'm going to say set a start line. Then when I go cycle start, 
And now it says, please insert the quarter in Jim Mill. We start the program from this line, saving me time. So the quarter inch end mill has uh, completed and this is what the part looks like uh, after that, that uh, pass. We will now move on to the drill to drill the hole for the screw that holds on the fin. The next operation is the countersink for the hole so that the countersunk screw fits there nice and flush. The countersunk's finished and we're ready to move on to the chamfer around the edge of the surfboard. Get rid of all the burrs. Alright, now the uh, countersink has done the deeper on the edges and then also done the deeper on the um, inside of the Go Engineer logo. And now we're going to put the text in on the uh, top of the board. Alright, for these next operations, this, this op 2, what we need to do is cut off the back of the uh, surfboards to free them up so that we can place them in this secondary jig. This was my goof, I goofed once, but these will um, hold the part so that I can finish the text on the back. And the way we do this uh, to hold these together is we can use the um, aid of a 3D printed jig. And essentially what this is going to do, and you can see I had a little extra material, so I cut that. It's also nice about these, um, these jigs. They're really easy to alter. And um, this is going to be placed into this guy here, like so. And it's a nice, firm fit. Um, we can use that... Uh, the geometry from SolidWorks to do an indent to create this um, this printed fixture and now we are ready to cut this so I'm going to place this in the vise with the parallels underneath each one of these little edges again um, using this as support the two parallels will sit along these two edges and then we'll trim off the top so let's take a look at how that looks All right, so here we are in Op 2. We got our 3D printed um, jig holding the bottom there. That way when we face off the top, it's going to hold all three of the surfboards underneath and keep them from moving. Also note that uh, you have enough clearance here for that face operation so it doesn't hit anything. My sanity check. Great, so let's uh, test this out and see how it works. I have re-zeroed Z but X and Y remain the same. And there you have it. We have our, uh, our surfboards cut. And the, you can see the white jig underneath holding everything in place. And now all I gotta do is take a Dremel to those little sections and my surfboards will be uh, cut free.
My name is Adam Hughes, and thank you for joining us on this new series, How It's Made. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something new.